Welcome to part two of 99 problems. In this video, I'll be going through questions 21 to 30. And uh, if you found the first part or the first 20 questions, maybe a little bit repetitive, hopefully these next 10 questions are a bit more interesting. The questions do get more challenging as you go through the paper. Um, so as we go, hopefully you'll find the questions more challenging as well. Okay, so let's get started. Question 21a says write down the value of 10 to the minus one. Well, any time you have a negative exponent, that's like writing one over, one over that thing, one over 10 to the power one is just 10. So your answer here could be one over 10 or 0.1 is fine as well. Either of those uh, is a 10th. So either of those will get you that one mark. Part B says find the value of 27 to the power of two over three. Uh, this is like uh, 27 to the power of a third squared. So this is the same as the cube root of 27, all squared. The cube root of 27, three times three times three is 27. So this is going to be three and then squared and three squared is nine. So final answer there is nine. Part C says write the square root of 75 in the form k root three where k is an integer. So for this, uh, we need to think of the factors of 75 uh, and what goes into 75 three times or well, 25 times three, that's 75. So I could write this as the square root of 25 times the square root of three. The square root of 25 is five. So I'll end up with five root three, therefore K would be five. So final answer there, five root three. All right, on to question 22a, write down the value of seven to the power zero. Anything to the power zero is one. So one being the answer there. Part B says write down the value of two to the negative four. As we said before, whenever you have a negative exponent, that's like saying one over that thing. So one over two to the power four. Two to the power four is 16. So this is one over 16. Part C. Rationalize the denominator of 14 over root seven. So we did a lot of these in the previous section of this video. We need to multiply it by the denominator or the third part of the denominator. Sometimes you might have a constant here as well, uh, but you only need to multiply by that third. 14 times root seven is 14 root seven. Root seven times root seven is seven. And then when you get to this stage, you can do 14 divided by seven is two. So final answer there would be two root seven. Question 23, part A says, write the recurring decimal 0.25 recurring as a fraction in its simplest form. Okay, not much space here to work with, but we'll see how we go. So usually the start of these types of questions is to say that uh, X equals 0.25 recurring. Uh, now there is a, a really solid process to these recurring decimals to fractions. And as once you get the hang of that, uh, you generally are able to do any of these types of questions. Um, but it takes a bit of work if you haven't done this before, uh, but hopefully once you've done a, a few practice problems, you'll get the hang of it. But anyways, we start with X equals the recurring decimal. Then we multiply both sides by 10. Multiply X by 10, we get 10 X. Multiply the right hand side by 10, we get 2.5 recurring. And then you want to keep multiplying by 10 until the recurring part of that decimal is the same. So you notice here, this is 0.25 recurring with just the five. Here we've got 0.5 recurring. Those decimal parts are not the same. So what I want to do here is to multiply by 10 again, the left and the right hand side. So we'll get 100 X equals 25.5 recurring. And here we have those decimal parts of those numbers, 0.5 recurring, the same. Uh, so then we can stop multiplying by 10. Okay, then you're on to the next part of solving this. Then you want to create an equation and say that if I subtracted these two uh, equations, uh, we can get rid of that recurring part of that number. So you take the left-hand sides, 100x take 10x, and then subtract the right-hand sides. So 25.5 recurring, take 2.5 recurring. And what this does is to get rid of that recurring decimal. 
which was stopping us from writing it as a fraction. Uh, so we can effectively cancel that out. And then we're, all we're left with is 100x take 10x on the left hand side, which is 90x, and then 25 take 2, which is 23. And then to get x, which remember x was this recurring decimal, so to find x as a fraction, divide by 90. So then x equals 23 on 90 as a fraction. So that is the process to turn this recurring decimal into a fraction. And the final answer there is 23 on 90. Part B says rationalize the denominator of 12 over root 6. Give your answer in its simplest form. Okay, so I think this is the last rationalizing the denominator question, hopefully. Getting a little bit sick of these in this paper anyway. So uh, top line, 12 times root 6 is 12 root 6. On the bottom line, root 6 times root 6 is 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So the final answer there would be 2 root 6. And sometimes you'll be able to simplify that third there. Uh, but root 6 we can't simplify. There's no square numbers that go into 6. So that will be our, that will be our answer in simplest form. Okay, question 24 says, Dan, Harry, and Regan sell cars. Dan sells X cars. Harry sells five more cars than Dan. Regan sells twice as many cars as Dan. Write an expression in terms of X for the mean number of cars Dan, Harry, and Regan sell. Okay, so uh, firstly, we want the total number of cars that they've sold together. Uh, so this is going to be the number of cars Dan has sold, which is X plus the number of cars Harry sells. Five more cars than Dan, that will be X plus five. And then twice as many cars as Dan would be two lots of X. So we need to add on two lots of X. So that's the, that's the total. If we want the mean number that they each sold, we need to divide by however many people there are. So divide by three. And it doesn't say simplify the expression, it just says write an expression. So you that would be fine for your final answer. But if we go ahead and simplify this, we could combine those like terms. So x plus x plus 2x would be 4x plus 5. And that's still divided by 3. So either of those is fine for your final answer. Uh, and probably in an exam, just stick with the one that takes the least amount of time. But there you go. Uh, question 24, 25 says Julie is X years old, Kevin is X plus 3 years old, Omar is 2X years old, write an expression in terms of X for the mean of their ages, so very similar to the last question, and if you didn't get the last question, maybe have a go at this one and see if you can get it yourself, uh, but for this one, I'm going to add them all together, so I'll have X plus X plus 3 plus 2X. Now, I'm not drawing brackets around that. You don't really need to. The only reason I did that is to show that that was the number of cars Harry sold, but I didn't really really need the brackets there. Um, so brackets or no brackets is fine. Uh, and then we want to divide by the number of people. So divide by three. And again, that would be fine for your final answer. It doesn't say to simplify, but if you did want to simplify, this would be four X plus three over three. Okay, so either of those is fine for your final answer there. Okay, on to question 26. It says, Asha and Lucy are selling pencils in a school shop. They sell boxes of pencils and single pencils. Asha sells seven boxes of pencils and 22 single pencils. Lucy sells five boxes of pencils and two single pencils. Asha sells twice as many pencils as Lucy. Work out how many pencils there are in a box. Okay, so we're going to have to create an equation out of all of this. Uh, so firstly, let's look at Asha. She sold seven boxes. Now we want a variable or an unknown to represent boxes. So seven times something, meaning the number of pencils in the box. So let's just say that's X. So seven X would be the number of pencils in a box, in, in seven boxes, sorry, plus on the 22 pencils, single pencils she sold. And then we have Lucy's. Uh, pencils. She'll have five boxes, so five lots of however many pencils are in the box, plus two single pencils. And now we want to make these equal somehow. 
They tell us that Asher sells twice as many pencils as Lucy. So to make these equal, what could I do to one side of this equation to make them equal? Well, remember this is Asher's side. This is the number of pencils Asher sold. And this is Lucy's. So if Asher's pencils are twice as many as Lucy's, we need to multiply the right hand side by two to make these equal. Okay, now we have an equation with one unknown. That means we can solve for that unknown. And so we just need to go ahead and simplify this and find the value of x. So uh, I would leave the left hand side as is for the moment and expand out this right hand side. 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times 2 is 4. And then combine like terms. So you want to bring this 7x over to the same side as the 10x. So if this is a positive 7x, subtract it from the other side. So 10x take 7x is 3x. And then bring this 4 over to the same side as the 22. They're both constants, so they're like terms. 22 take 4 is 18. So 18 equals 3 lots of x. Therefore, what is x equal? 3 times 6 is 18. So therefore, x equals 6. So remember, x was the number of pencils in a box. So therefore, our final answer to answer this question, how many pencils are there in a box? It's 6. Okay, on to question 27. 27 says, Hillary, Imogen, and Jiha are playing a game with cards. Imogen has three cards more than Hillary. Jiha has twice as many cards as Imogen. They have a total of 53 cards. Work out how many cards Hillary has. So again, we need to create an equation for this question. So if we said that H represented the number of cards Hillary has, Imogen has three more cards than Hillary. So we need to add on Imogen's cards, which will be H plus three, and then add on Gia's cards, which is twice as many as Imogen. So if Imogen has H plus three, Jiha will have two times that, two times H plus three. And it says the total number of cards is 53, so we can say this equals 53. Once you have this equation, all you need to do is to simplify this left-hand side and then solve for H. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, expand these brackets out, we would get 2H plus 6. So let's just write that above here, 2H plus 6. Then let's combine like terms. So H plus H is 2H plus another 2h would be 4h, and then 3 plus 6 would be 9, and this still equals 53. Now at this step, I'm trying to get h by itself to solve for h. How do I get h by itself? I need to get rid of this plus 9. How do I get rid of that plus 9? Uh, take it over to the other side, and if it's a plus 9 over here, it becomes a negative 9 on the right-hand side. Uh, so then this is going to be 4h equals 53 take 9, 53 take 9 is 44. And then if I've got 4 times h, divide by 4 on the right hand side, 44 divided by 4 is 11. So h is going to equal 11. Therefore, Hillary, remember h equaled the number of cards Hillary had. So our final answer there is 11. Okay, 28 says, here is a part of an advert for a driving school. Eight out of 10 of the people we teach pass the driving test first time. Ali talked to 56 people who had been taught to drive by the driving school. 43 of these people passed the driving test first time. Does this support what is said in the advert? You must show how you get your answer. So we're going to have to compare these uh, proportions. So out, eight out of 10 is our first one. That's what the advert said. And then we have this uh, 43 out of 56, 43 out of 56. Uh, so what do you think would make it easy to compare these? Well, that's the main reason we have percentages is percentages make uh, comparing fractions like this uh, really clear. So if we turn this into a, a percentage, this would be 80%. And then to turn this one into a percentage, uh, we can use our calculator. So please use your calculator where appropriate. Um, trying to turn this into a percentage without a calculator, uh, you wouldn't get this type of question in a non-calculator exam. 
or if you did, they wouldn't give you a, a fraction like this. 43 being a prime number makes it kind of difficult to get this out of a 100. So get your calculator out, turn this into a percentage by doing 43 divided by 56 and then multiplying by 100. And this is going to be 76.78. So let's just round that to 76.8%. 70, that's approximately 76.8%. Now you can see, because we've converted them to percentages, it's really easy to compare. 80% uh, is clearly bigger than 76%. Um, so my answer here would be it doesn't support the advert because it's less, but you could also make the argument that it does because it's close to 80%. But usually if you're making a claim in the advert, you want the actual percentage to be higher than that. So you'd want this to be like 85 or 90%. And then you can say, you can make that claim in your advert. Um, so anyways, uh, let's summarize. So as 76.8% uh, is lower than 80%, uh, then this does not support the advert. Okay, so that was question 28 for three marks. 29 says, a teacher asks George to think of a number. She then says, add 10 to your number and multiply the answer by three. George thinks of the number five. He writes down five plus 10 times three equals 35. What should George have written down? Okay, so what, what sort of uh, operations will we do here? Well, this is an order of operations question. Uh, so you know from order of operations, you do the multiplication first. Uh, and then look at this sentence. It says, add 10 to your number and multiply the answer by three. Uh, so the first operation we're doing is adding 10 and then we're multiplying all of that by three. Uh, so what George should have done here is to put this in brackets. So what he should have written down would be five plus 10 first. And because it's in brackets, you do that first, then multiply that by three. And then this would give a different answer. This would be five plus 10 is 15 times three is 45. All right, question 30 says, put a pair of brackets in each statement to make the statement true. So the first one is two times seven squared take two equals 94. For these types of questions, I usually just do trial and error uh, because once you try one set of brackets, you usually see uh, what the answer is after that. Uh, but in this first one, there's really only one possibility. Uh, if I put the brackets around here, it wouldn't actually change anything. Um, so let's see what we'd get if we did two times 49 that would be 98, take two, that would be 96. So then therefore the brackets must be around here. This would be 49, take two would be 47, multiplied by two would be 94. This one here, um, let's try, I don't know, around the last ones. Let's see what we get. 16 divided by two is eight, plus eight. That's clearly not going to be four. And again, anyways, if I put the brackets around there, it wouldn't have changed the answer. Um, let's try around the middle ones, two plus six. So it's 16 divided by eight would be two, plus two would be four. Okay, so it must be around the two and the six there. Um, so those questions can sometimes be a bit tricky. Those ones I think weren't too bad, but uh, my general approach is just trial and error. Try one set of numbers. If it doesn't work, try another one, see what you get. Okay, so that was uh, all of the questions I'm going through in this video. Stick around for part three if you want to for the next set of questions. I hope you found that useful. Please leave a like if so. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.